Good afternoon. I'm Chris Jaddick, Director of Communications for T-BARDA, and I want to welcome you to our uh, pre-conference proposal meeting regarding the Pinellas Aerial Gondola Feasibility Study. Uh, we already have some participants coming in, so appreciate your interest uh, in this RFQ. A couple of housekeeping things before I turn it over to uh, Diane Durr, who is our Manager of Procurement at T-BARDA, and that would be how we are going to accept uh, questions and answer them during this meeting. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A feature. If you hover your mouse over there, uh, open that up and you can submit a question at any time. We'll be answering those verbally as the meeting proceeds, but feel free to put those in at any time uh, during this meeting as well. The uh, raise hand feature is activated, but please don't raise your hand. We won't be taking, any, we will not be taking any verbal questions on this. Use the Q&A feature for any questions you have. And with that, I want to turn it over to Diane Durr, who I mentioned is our Director of Procurement. Diane, take it away. Good afternoon, and thank you, Chris. At this time, I would like to introduce our panelists to you today. We have with us Brian Pizarro, who is actually our Principal Planner, as well as Project Manager. And we also have with us Sarah Caper. She is representing Forward Pinellas in the event there are any questions for her. So today, what I would like to do very briefly is to go through um, a certain number of the features in our solicitation, RFQ 2021-01, uh, which is Pinellas Area Gondola, Gondola Feasibility Study. Um, the first thing I want to point out to you is that, of course, this RFQ is posted in two locations. It is actually on TBARDA's website, as well as the Men's Star. So I'm not sure where you might have um, actually downloaded your information from, but it is there. We have since the posting of the RFQ had two addendums that we have also inserted on both of those websites. So I would like to just let everyone know that um, there is a special place on the solicitation um, announcement itself on the solicitation offer and award form item number 14 on the first page. There is um, places for you to insert the addendum number as well as the date that it was um, posted so that once the solicitations, we receive the offers that we will be able to uh, make sure that everyone had all of the corresponding addendums that were actually sent out. A couple of other things I would like to mention to you is pertaining to our schedule. I know that most of you all are aware that the timeline for this particular RFQ, the due date is March, March 8th by three o'clock in the afternoon. That is actually the due date for this proposal. Also, I would like to let you know that we will have the, um, the evaluation done on March 23rd of this March 23rd is the um, evaluation date. Also, we will issue the notice of intent to award on March 26, followed by presenting our um, the t RFQ to our board for approval on March 23rd. And lastly, we intend to award the RFQ on April 26, April 26. So those are just some of the deadlines that uh, I wanted you to be aware of. Also, as it relates to submittal requirements, I just mentioned on our solicitation offer and award form, I mentioned, I pointed out item number 14 for your addendums. I would also like to point out on page, it would be page three of the proposal. And it has the required information for you to submit back with the proposal. So 
So there are, of course, everything is identified as it relates to the solicitation to offer an award form, which is, of course, the first form. Uh, it has two pages with it. And also, we also ask for exhibit a, which is uh, the uh, representations and certifications. We would like to receive that back as well. On item exhibit G, disadvantaged business enterprise provisions. Um, it asks for attachments one and two. However, there is only attachment one that's in the document. And we would like to also acknowledge that the disadvantaged business enterprise is actually a federal regulation. And while this project is not being funded by federal funds, we do encourage a minor minority participation in this RFQ. So we encourage you to utilize that form and um, to send it back in to us. And the other um, observation I want to make is on exhibit Exhibit K, it asks you to submit that. Of course, we do not want you to send the contract back to us at this point in time. The contract will actually be done later on once we have uh, selected the, the awardee for this particular project. So I believe that is all of the things that I needed to point out. Oh, there is one other thing. Um, the offer's proposal, the last thing on that page three, I would like to you for you to pay attention to um, the specifications that is identified or listed in exhibit B. It would be number five. It outlines the criteria for the proposal. So I would ask that you please pay close attention to that. I believe that is all that I wanted to point out in this particular segment. We will now have um, we will now have Brian to uh, do a summary of the project, and uh, at this point in time, I will just turn it over to him. Okay, thank you, Diane. Um, Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brian Passaro. I'm a principal planner with T. Barta, as was already mentioned. I'm going to be the project manager of the study. Uh, with me also is Sarah Caper, who is principal planner from Ford Pinellas, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Pinellas County. Sarah will be on the project management team with me. Uh, to give you some background on how this RFQ came about, uh, T. Barta received $1 million from the Florida legislature in 2019 to study innovative transit technologies. We used about 221,000 of those funds to do what was called the Innovative Transit Technology Study, which looked at three modes, Hyperloop, air taxis, and aerial gondolas. It looked at what the current state of the technology was for these three modes, what the current regulatory environment was, and it looked at potential corridors and connections. One of the study's recommendations was to see if there was any interest from the cities and taking a closer look at a specific corridor or corridors where gondolas could be implemented. So staff from T. Barta and Ford Pinellas, we met with staff and elected officials from the city of St. Pete and the city of Clearwater. And we found out that there was indeed interest. Uh, specifically, they were interested in examining the two corridors mentioned in the scope of work. One in St. Petersburg, connecting the area around Tropicana Field with the St. Pete Pier and then one in Clearwater connecting downtown Clearwater and Clearwater Beach with a possible connection on island estates near the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. The purpose, of in, purpose and intent of this report is to provide T. Barta, Ford, Pinellas, and the cities with enough information to decide on whether to proceed to a more detailed environmental assessment or a design build contract. Uh, Sarah and I have done our best to put together a scope of work that will get us and the cities the information we think we need to make that decision. That being said, we encourage you to provide any recommendations to enhance the scope of work. That is in fact the one, in fact, that is one of the things that you could get points for uh, in the evaluation criteria. That's in section three of the evaluation criteria. 
also, we did not have a set timeline for when the study needs to be completed by. We asked the proposers to provide a recommended schedule and timeline in their proposal. Um, and that's, that's just a short summary. I didn't want to go through the, the scope work line by line because I, I trust that you've all have read it. Um, Sarah, I didn't know if there was anything you wanted to add on behalf of Ford Pinellas. Thank you, Brian. Just that we're looking forward to this study and working with Tibarda and the other partners and are excited to see the proposals. Okay. All right, and I'll hand it back over to you, Diane. Okay, thank you very much. So at this point in time, we would like to um, hand this back over to Chris Jaddick, who is our Director of Communications, to entertain any questions that you all may have at this point in time. As he has indicated, you may um, type your questions into the Q&A box, and we prefer that you not raise your hand uh, for questions, but type them in the box, and he will facilitate those. And for all the questions that we are able to answer at this point, we will answer those today. If there are questions that needs to be deferred, we will get back to you with answers uh, before the close of business on Friday. So at this time, Chris. Very good. We have three questions in the queue. And so uh, feel free to add those right now. I'll take them as they came in. So question number one, and this came in, Diane, as you were making your comments, can you clarify the t -Barta board date? It was mentioned March 23 and April 26. Okay. <clears throat> and, Di and Diane, I should probably clarify, T. Barter, we do not have a board meeting in March. That, no, it's not. It's not a board meeting. It is uh, when the evaluation committee actually does the review. Okay. That is on March 23rd. April 26th is, um, is the award of the, is the award. Also, um, we actually send this RFQ to the board on April 23rd. So April 23rd is the day that it goes to the board and um, award then will be made on April 26th. Very good, thank you for that. Uh, question number two, is the aim for the feasibility study to estimate the potential economic benefits and impacts of different route alignments to local businesses, residents, and the regional economy? I would say, and I'll take a crack at this, uh, Sarah. I would say that the looking at the potential economic benefits, it's not the main purpose of the study, but it is one of the things that, particularly the city of Sink of Clearwater was interested in. Um, the staff from the city of Clearwater is interested in seeing what impact the gondola could have on really improving downtown Clearwater and helping to uh, facilitate more, I guess, visitors coming from the beach area into downtown, which is not something that is happening so much today. Very good. I'll move on to the next question. Thank you for that. Will the team that is awarded this study be precluded from future phases or the DB award? We did include in the study, there is, um, we do mention that we do not want anyone working on this study that has a, an interest in being the later operator or builder of this system. And the reason why we put that language in there is because we want this to be an unbiased study. We don't want the study being uh, biased towards any particular manufacturer or anyone that um, has an interest in building it because the commitment has not yet been made to the building this yet. Very good, next question regards a question on ECO transit capacity. Ridership analysis will determine system peak capacity, which is precedent to SWOT analysis, rope line configurations, alignments, stations, visuals, et cetera. So project schedules should reflect this. Let me, I'm reading the question again. Uh, let's 
I guess the short answer to your question would be yes, the project schedule should reflect that. Very good. Next question. With the recent introduction of Senate Bill 1130, can you describe the potential impact to the solicitation and or contract if it passes? Will there be a contract approval contingency due to SB 1130? The answer to that would be yes, we would proceed with this study. Um, the source of the funding for this was an earmark that we got um, from the legislature. So this is only money uh, that can be spent uh, on studies like this. So even if Senate Bill 1130 was to pass, um, it would not go into effect until June, I believe, of 2022. And we would hope to have the study complete prior to that time. Okay, thank you. ECO Transit, is there an emphasis on the routes being express or local with more stops with P3 opportunities? I would say that that decision has not been made. Um, that is something that I think when we kick off the study and we meet with key stakeholders and we talk about um, the purpose and need uh, for the gondola within each corridor, that is something that'll come out with discussions with city staff on are, are they looking for something that provides local connections or are they looking for a gondola system that is more express type service, just maybe connecting two points at, at either end. Next question, will certified MBEs, minority business enterprises, also be eligible to be included in Exhibit G, specifically MBEs that are not DBE certified, or will only DBEs be accepted? I would like to defer this question um, for the moment, and I will get back to, let's see who asked. Uh, David, I will get back to you before they close the business on Friday to provide an answer for you. And we should know we're going to post that answer on this web page. Um, answers to these questions are going to be posted afterwards. And certainly any additional information that comes out that we can't answer today, we'll also post that on the page as well. Thank you. Next question. Clarification on DB exclusion. Does that include design services? Is that a question for me? Um, Whoever wants to take a clarification on DB. Oh, oh, cover, oh, oh, design, oh, oh, oh I, for some reason, I, I misunderstood what DB, oh, clarification on design build exclusion. Um, give me a moment. Let me go back to see what exactly. Give me a second here. I need to go and look and see what exactly was the language that we put in the RFQ. Just, just one moment. And we have after this, while Brian looks at that, uh, I think we have two more questions in the queue. So certainly if you have anything else that you wanna ask, now's a good time to type those in. Okay, I'm going back to that question. The, the, the way we word it was TBARDA therefore expressly states its desire that no consultants and or subconsultants that wish to be involved in any future construction, operation, and or maintenance of the gondola system bid on the project. So reading that, I do not see anything that would exclude a consultant from future involvement with the project for design. Very good. I'll move on to the next question. The ITT study was conducted by WSP. Will WSP be allowed to bid for this feasibility study? Yes. If questions arise during development of our proposal, is there an opportunity and mechanism for asking such questions? Yes. If they would like to submit those questions to me via email, 
and I will make sure that all of the communication is forwarded to those who are in attendance, as well as placed on the website wherever the RFQs are located. Very good. Is there a preference for industry standard cabin size of 10 persons or larger gondola cabins up to 35 passengers? No, there is no stated preference at this point because I mean, the first thing that has to be determined is, you know, establishing what the what the city of St. Pete and what the city of Clearwater, what they want to accomplish with these gondola systems. And then once that is established, coming up with the alignment and the cabin size that best fits what they're trying to accomplish. So this, the short answer is no, we do not have, at this point, we don't have a stated preference for cabin size. And we have one more question in the queue at this point. Is there an estimated budget for this study? We have internally uh, put together some estimates, but we're asking because this is an RFQ and we are not um, considering cost in the evaluation, um, that is something that we will get at after we establish um, who the most qualified is. Very good, that's all the questions we have now. I'll keep my eye out. Uh, if you have any final comments here, Diane, Brian or Sarah, uh, but the questions have been answered. I would just, I, maybe it will be a good idea. I know some attendees probably came in a little bit late. So I would just go over the deadlines again. The deadline for the RFQ proposal is March 8th, three o'clock in the afternoon. Also, we will have the evaluation, the ranking committee review that will be done on March 23rd. A notice of intent to award is March 26th. We will send the RFQ to our board, to t Barter board for approval on April 23rd. And the award of the RFQ will be April 26th. And we have another question here, which uh, I'll bring up now. Will architectural urban design visioning be part of the required services for the feasibility study? There will be a limited amount of that, but however, we have to be clear that the source of funding, the source of funding that we have for the study can only be used for planning. Um, we are not allowed to use um, the, the funding for this study on engineering design or detailed architectural work. Okay. Will the evaluation session be public? I, I would like to defer this question because I'm not sure if we have made that determination as of yet. Okay. And when we do, we will certainly post that on our website. Yes. Okay. Are you anticipating holding interviews? At this, at this point, no. Are there identified preferred departure and arrival points for each route? Other than the general locations that are mentioned in the scope of work, no. We have no additional questions at this time. Oh, no, we just had one come in. I spoke too mm -hmm. soon. Will the list of meeting attendees today be shared? I'm sorry, what was the question again? Will the list of meeting attend uh, attendees today be shared? Be shared? Um, there, there isn't anything that would prohibit us from sharing that information. Um, I have not made a determination about that. I do believe, I think if you hit the attendee tab on the Zoom link now, you will see a list of those who have their names are listed there. And I think that's available to attendees to see now. And under the participants? Under uh, attendees, under participants, mm -hmm. tab to the right, you'll see there's a, a list of attendees. So mm -hmm. I just make everybody aware that they can probably see that now if they wanted to. 
I do not see that on my screen. When you click attendees, there's panelists, the four of us, and then you click over to attendees where it says 24. You should be able to see a list of attendees. Well, I'm going to move on to the next question. Okay, thank you. Um, attendee basically says, I believe that's only for hosts. So we might be able to see it, but you may not. So Diana, I'll let you take that under advisement. That list is available to us. And I believe, you know, Zoom captures it. It would be, we would have that list after the meeting, I believe. Okay, so if we have the information, we can certainly share yeah, it. Attendees are telling me that they don't see it on their side, but I can see it. And I do believe uh, you'd be able to, or we should, it should be captured as well. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, I have it here. Very good. Will it be available after? I mean, how, how can I get all of the attendees' names? Uh, once the meeting is done, uh, it should be uh, it should be uh, available to us. So oh. I can forward that to you. Okay. All right. Let me check one more thing real quick here. We'll check for final questions. Attendees cannot see the list. I appreciate attendees you are weighing in on that. So uh, if we have that captured and available, we'll certainly make that available as well. Um, how do we email Diane Durr? Diane, would you like to give your email address? Sure. My name on uh, my email is Diane, D-I-A-N-E dot D-U-R-R at tbarda.com. Again, D-I-A-N-E dot D-U-R-R at tbarda.com. And I also I'll put that under the answered column so you should be able to see that as well too. All right. Uh, if not, uh, let's see. I do not believe we have any additional questions at this time. We do not, we've answered all the questions. Thank you. Okay. I, I would like to right. take this time to thank everyone for attending to, uh, here today. And of course, if you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to email me regarding those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that concludes our meeting. Thank you very much and good luck. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.